Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Dear students, welcome to the course Organic Farming. Over the last several classes, we have discussed about the organic farming definition, its concept, what is the trend of the India in the organic market as well as the global globe. Also, what are the different type of organic manure, which type of organic things are permitted in organic farming and which is restricted. We have also know different type of composting methods, biofertilizer and other things. So, now in this class, we will know how we can control the weeds that is management of weeds in organic agriculture. Everybody we or everyone know the organic in organic farming we cannot use any artificial or company made any factory made products just like the fertilizer also the herbicides. So, herbicide in India as well was play a very definite role by controlling the weed very cheap, but there are some repercussions may be there be some toxicity effect on soil quality, but in organic farming we cannot use any type of this type of herbicide. So, let us go, what is the definition of weed? There may be different type of definition, some people can tell the weed is a notorious plant, weed is very bad plant or weed may be causing loss, but a simple definition we can tell, a weed is a plant considered undesirable in a particular situation. So, any plant when we do that is out of place and out of time. Suppose, this is a, we are growing maize, maize is a crop. But if the same some maize plants is coming in the rice field or in some vegetable field, that maize we can call a weed. There may be lots of amaranthus is there. There may be chinopodium album. This chinopodium album or bothua people use to take as a vegetable, leafy vegetable. But when they come in very high quantity in case of wheat field or in case of some pea field, they are causing nuisance, they are also causing economic damage to the crop. So, they are called weed. So, weed is out of place and out of time. So, we can clear that is considered undesirable in a particular situation. So, weed constitute a special class of paste which seriously limits the production of major crops and they compete with the crops because they are also plants. So, they are also staying together with the plants. So, they always compete. For what they are compete? They are compete for the space because within the same area they are growing. They are also competing for the lights, whatever the sunlight getting, they are competing with the soil water and they also competing the nutrients and most of the weeds are very hardy in nature. So, they are competitively superior as compared to the crop plants. So, that is why in our agricultural system, we have to always take care of weed, how to control the weed so that significant crop damage should not be done. In organic agriculture is a holistic production, which promotes and enhancing the agro ecosystem, health and biodiversity and we cannot use herbicide, then how we will manage the weed and what is the importance of weed in Indian agriculture. If we see whatever the total different type of losses crop, majority every time we have give more and more emphasis on the insect, pest or disease attack, but our attention for the weed is comparatively low. If you see, we have maximum use for that other purpose, for case of insect, they are lost about 29 percent, whether in case of in disease and other things, they have having more, but in case of weed, the maximum occur of weed. So, if you see our total loss of weed is 37 percent. If there is 100 percent loss of different things, we can category, weed consider very high 37 percent as compared to the insect 29 percent, disease 22 percent and others may be post harvest loss or some other nematodes and other plants. So, maximum crop loss occurs due to the weed, but our attention to the weed is given very less. Why? Because everyone farmers, everyone we are thinking we can manage the weed by weeding, by mechanical weeding and we cannot clearly see the loss. Suppose we are growing a crop tomato and sometime too much a paste has been come tomato fruit borer and majority crop our damage, so we can show oh so much loss is there, all the produce has been spoiled by this insect or maybe some other diseases. But in case of weed, we are not equally just visible the yield loss, but from the germination, from the establishment, from the growth period, they are causing loss because they are taking the nutrient and soil from the 
nutrient and water from the soil. So, plants suffer nutrient and water deficiency. They also compete for the space for sunlight. So, our plants become weaker. Suppose a plant is able to produce 5 quintal, in case of weed infestation, he is produced only 3 quintal or 3.5 quintal. So, there is a yield penalty, but when it is not easily visible as compared to the disease and pest attack, our attention over the years, our scientific research or anywhere we can tell, weed has been little bit ignored as compared to the insect pest and disease. But we have to always think and matter which causes more or less as compared to the pest and diseases. So, always we have to take care of the weeds. There are different type of weeds. Weeds is some cropped area. Whatever, although any plant is when it is out of place and out of time, so that is undesirable for that particular ecosystem is called weed. But there are some common problematic weed which are known to cause a very huge loss for the crop yield. Among them, some are, as I have listed, one is Phalaris minor. This Phalaris minor is wheat of a wheat. In the wheat plant, this come also along with the wheat. They also resemble to the same. So, in the initial stage, it is very tough to identify which is our wheat plant and which is our Phalaris minor. So, by taking this advantage, they are causing the crop loss. Similarly, Echinocla cross gully, also it is, is just like the rice plant. So, also in here case, we cannot identify very easily it is either rice or it is a weed. So, in this condition, the, and there are other are also different too much weeds, Ageratum is there, Cypress rotendus, Weediris and other things. Now, this is, I have discussed about what the different type of weeds, I have just only stated few of them in cropped area. Now, what is the different types which in a non cropped area? Because a cropped area farmers is trying to manage, there is some economic interest of the farmers to control the weeds in their crop area. But suppose whenever you go in the roadside, you will see lots of weeds in the roadside. You can tell that is no man's land, no one is taking care of its lawn. If you go to the railway tract, just th lakhs and lakhs of weeds are growing and no one is controlling. But some of these weed previously they invade the no man's land where there is no agriculture or cultivation is going on. But over the years, they have adopted themselves in such a way, they have evolved in such a way, they are now also coming to the cropland. Similarly, I give one example of the Parthenium hysterophorus. This is also called a congress grass because why it is called congress grass? The flower of this Parthenium is used to look like the cap at the time Neurian Congressian people used to wear. So, that is called a Congress grass. But if you see this Parthenium, whenever you go to any roadside, any railway tract, if you go to the South India also, Eastern India also, they has invaded like anything in the no man's land. And in the South India, like Karnataka, also Indra, Andhra Pradesh. They are also in Tamil Nadu, they are also coming to the crop field. Previously, they were in the no man's land. And this weed is not native to the India. When we have in the condition of the 1960, 1950, when we have not sufficient food grain production, we used to purchase wheat seed and other type of seeds from USA and Mexico countries to feed our population. So, at that time, by mistake, some different seeds of Parthenium also came. And when they came in every ecosystem, there is a balance. Just like a frog eat the insect, a snake eat the frogs, peacock eat the snake. So, there is some, always some balance so that their population is maintained. Some species does not their population will increase to so much. The same is true for the plant species. But always there are some natural insect which attack the plants so that they are, they are not too much invasive. But in case of Parthenium, when it come from the outside, what did happen? There is no natural enemy. So, there is no insect known which will eat the Parthenium and they has a very high type of allelopathic chemicals, they, they are faster growth, they can grow by root, they can go by seed, they have some allergic effects, so you will not touch. Due to this general advantage, Parthenium become a very notorious weed nowadays in India and is very tough to control. Similarly, whatever the different other weeds which are mainly invade the non-crop area where we are not growing, lantern camera. Everywhere you will see this much beautiful flower. People can also use this for decorum purpose. But it is also a not in to India. This lantana has camera is come from Sri Lanka by some birds that is Indian moina. Because birds use to eat the weed seeds. And when they pass through their excreta, they this weed seeds become germinated and they grow from one area to other area. And they have very much dispersal mechanism. Their seeds is very hardy. They can also store in the soil 20 years, 30 years and they are not easily, their dormancy is there, 
they can carry by our wheels whenever you go with your car or truck in the tire also they can fix and they go some newer areas so th this is the different also you are giving irrigation in the irrigation water weeds it also carry so always we have to take care of these weeds and if you see this hecarum spontaneum if you go to the any river basin maybe ganga and other side lots of this beautiful flower is coming and always it is coincide in the time of durga puja and other festivals but it is also a very much weed nowadays it is cropping in non cropped area and you cannot grow any forest plantation you cannot go for any horticulture or orchard development so these are some weeds which are also occurring in the non crop area also some is parasitic weeds this means it not only invaded the crop land but also they are associated with the crops so you are growing suppose some type of certain crops like sorghum so sorghum is our economic crop sorghum we are growing but this type of crop one is the striga they will come association with that so they not only reduce the yield they also take nutrients from the soil sometime also from the plant so the plant performance will decrease so there are different this is called problematic weeds if you go also the cascuta they can cover the whole plant canopy so you will not visible any plant the plant will not get sufficient sunlight so they cannot perform well their yield will be lost so the last like cascuta reflexa strigia asiatica lorentha species and orobanchus sarnua so this is the parasitic weeds so previously if you also see what about the different ever okay aquatic bodies in every where whoever go in india we are very lucky to get very good quality of good quantity of water if you go for the countries like egypt and israel they are getting very rich rainfall but they are managing well if you see we have lots of aquatic water bodies and we there is a very much high potential for cultivation of fish and other things but if you see more than majority more than 30 to 40 percent of our aquatic bodies that is maybe lakes maybe ponds or wetlands are covered with different type of weeds one is the water hyacinth you see it is in also called kachuri pana if you go in the eastern india like bihar in west bengal majority our water reservoir is covered with this single weed but this is also net, not native to india it has it is used to tell the due to the just warren hasting at that time of lord of the east indian company his wife has taken from another area for a beautification purpose because they are giving blue to pinkish flower and very good looking flower but after that he has just increase in population in such a way everywhere most of the our aquatic bodies is covered so our production of the fishes and other things has been decreased and if you see there is other salvinia molesta pistia stratugis and also punta megaton typha this is the different types of problematic weed nowadays in aquatic bodies so we have to take care of always whenever there is some problematic weed in aquatic bodies how to effectively we have to control you and in case of organic farming you have to take care more because you and cannot apply any type of herbicide to kill these weeds so what is the emerging challenges in weed management weed were in the previously there weed is in the today's pair weed will be also in the future but due to the climate change it is used to say the weed problem will be more the temperature may be increase rainfall may be increase so in that condition weeds are more hardier plant if you saw any area in a jungle biomass or any where your periphery weeds are growing like luxurious you have not to give any fertilizer you have not to take care of the weeds they are coming by their own but the crop plants we have to take care lots so weed are too much hardy and their root system is too much well developed they have the high dormancy and various dispersal mechanism method so if we see when we do the adoption of high yielding varieties and hybrids our main, one of the main important is to enhancing the yield but if there is weed problem is there we cannot achieve and if you see our human population in the globe is already cross 7 billion in india we have 130 crores people so you have to feed this population so you cannot risk your crop for any loss for the weed also we are giving different type of fertilizer and irrigation altered agronomy of the crops monocropping or fixed cropping system this is very much important when we are growing different type crops tomorrow wheat after that pea next year maybe some other crop cow pea so when is there is crop rotation or crop diversification any particular species of weed will not dominant because in every crop species there is some associated weeds so when there are five six seven different types of weed they also compete between each other so one species does not become the dominant one but if you are growing only wheat 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 so nowadays phalaris minor was not a problem 
Nowadays, everywhere the wheat growing belt of India, Phalaris minor weed is a very major problem and very difficult to control. And inorganically also they are showing resistant to different type of herbicide like isoproteuron. So, always we have to promote diversified cropping, different type of croppings in a single crop, not same cropping, just you are growing rice. There are some weeds like Cyperus rotundus. This is a very also problematic weed, but if there is water stagnation for water or one or two months, their population is decreasing. So, if we grow in that area for one year rice, their population will be decreased for the next year. Similarly, also we are getting herbicide resistance in weed, I have already told. With this Phalaris minor has developed resistance against the different type of herbicides including the isoproteuron in weed. So, nowadays you cannot control the weeds even with the herbicides, because they become herbicide resistance. Then at that condition, what will be the fate? And also there is herbicide residue hazard, this herbicide is sometime coming to our water, our water bodies, our drinking water and coming up within our human body. And also see invasor aligned weeds I have already told just like Parthenium. So, this type of weeds is not native to India, so there is no natural enemies of these weeds. So, whenever they come to the some new ecosystem, their growth will be like anything. So, uh, this is always type to control because Parthenium probably may not be a problem in Mexico. There are a different type of insects, one is the Mexican beetle, Gygrocoma bicolorata. So, they can control the parthenium, but in India when the natural enemy is not present, their population is increasing in enormous rate. And also the implication of climate change already I am telling, in the climate change, most of the, this type of weeds are C4 plants. And C4 plants also there will be C3 and C4 mechanism. In case of C3 weeds, the carbon dioxide will be increased more in case of C4. So, this in different type of mechanism and climate change, it is projected that when the climate change is occurring or temperature and rainfall is going to be changed, weed will be more dominant as compared to our crops. So, weeds effect on crop yield. About 34 to 37 percent I have already told weed causes among the losses. And what is the other things? How they are causing the loss? Weed compete with crops for resources and potentially crop yields. It also increase the produce production cost. How is production cost? You need labor, you need mechanical weeder, you need hover. In case of inorganic farming, you need herbicides. So, not only they are reducing the crop yield, but also they are increasing the cost of production. So, by two way it is reduction. First, yield is less, second, cost of production is low. So, it immediately our total profit will be much, much less. Similarly, they are also harbor different type of insect and diseases, because they are staying in the burned area. So, when there is no crop in the field, this may be different type of insect and disease spore, they stay in the burned weeds. So, they popula their population has been done, they good get food from there and when next time we are going crop, they invade. So, they also enhancing the insect pest and disease attack of the crops and though also interfere with the machinery and reduce quality. How is quality do you know, just in very, very years ago, there is a seed of Argimon Mexicana. They are very small, small seed and these seeds are look like mustard. So, what happened if you have not take care, the seeds of Argimon Mexicana is being mixed with the mustard. And when there will be, you will crush the seeds along with the mustard oil. So, there is some toxicity effect is of there due to this Argicon Mexicana. And this Argicon Mexicana is used to drop seed disease in human. So, whenever you also go, there are too much weed, some objectionable weed we used to take. When we cannot separate the seeds, it looks same like, same things. So, whenever we want to good quality food, so quality they are also, so they are reducing the quantity of yield, they are also enhancing the cost of cultivation and also they are reducing the quality of the produce. But every crop has a some critical weed fee period. What is the critical weed fee period? Suppose a rice, we are growing rice, the rice is probably we are taking 130 days crop. If you say the initial stage, 10 to 15 days, rice crops are far apart this is one crop, one crop like one crop. If there is some small 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 ruids, they may not be a problem, because at that condition they are not competing. Similarly, when the rice crops become big, more than 60 days per hectare, so they are big enough rice plant, they can now compete with the weeds. So, even after the 60 days, if there is some weeds coming in our crop field, they may not be so much harmful. But which period? Suppose in case of rice plant, in case of rice, there is some critical weed period, it is maybe take 15 to 45 days. 
So, this is called critical weed free period. This is critical weed free period. So, if there is no weed, we can maintain the rice field in such a way, there is no weed in between that period, so we will we'll not catch so much economic damage. If there is some weed, maybe initial period, and after 45 days or 50 days, weed may come, but that weed not because you cannot control the weed 100 percent, weed will be there. But you have to take care in which situation of the crop, which time period of the weed period we have to take care of. So that otherwise there may be weed and if we are weeding again done after 60 days or 70 days, we are using 5000 rupees for the weed control. But our yield reduction suppose is only 10 kilo, that is only 100 rupees or 200 rupees. So we have to always see whether we are going any weeding experiment, if we are investing 1000 rupees for the weed whether we are saving 1000 in the crop yield or not. So, only then weed management practices will be economical. So, most of the vegetative crops one first one four or one third of the growing season that is four to six weeks after the seedlings is the critical growth period. So, if we can control the weed in this period, even there will be weed in the latter part that will not cause economic damage. Weed also control we when are we are damage controlling weed in the different way. Before the growing of the rice or any crops, there may be some weed, so, there is pre-emergence weed. After the germination, there will be some crops and when the growth, growth of the plant in the higher stage 30, 60, 70 days, there may be growth. So, there may be different type of weed control mechanism, some for the pre-emergence weed, some for the post-emergence of weed. So, if we see for India, from our Indian uh, Council of Agriculture Research along with lots of state agriculture universities and state governments are doing weed research. So, first a coordinated weed control scheme on different crops mainly wheat, rice and sugar cane was initiated in 11 states to economic 1950. Then very important all India coordinated research project on weed control has been started in the year of 1970 with the collaboration with the USD, United States Department of Agriculture. And the National Research Center for Weed Science has been established in 1989 and in 2004 it was renamed as Directorate of Weed Research. So, there is some specifically designed institute in Indian Council of Agricultural System system to take care of different type of advanced research on weed, how to control the weeds may be for inorganic measurements otherwise for the organic farming. So, what is the critical we have the chemical weed control. In case of organic farming we cannot use, but majority in other area chemical weed control is very much popular. Then what is the benefit, why they are being popular, they saves labors very simple you can give one spray, it is always efficient, timely and economical control and it is uh, reduces also the early planting, control difficult to weeds, mechanical damage to crop is prevented because when you are running any machine other things your crop may be disturbed, but in case of herbicide the effect problem is not there, but there are some limitations. When herbicide may sometimes cause crop phytotoxicity, because in a plant if there is some insect it is very easy to control because insect body is some another system, plant body is different system. But in case of weed control, weeds are also plant. So, crop is also plant, weed is also plant. So, if you are trying to control the weed, this weed and plant has probably same time of mechanism within their body. So, sometime if there is a miscalculation of dose and another things, your crop damage will be there, phytotoxicity crop can be died. So, you have to always very much care while application of any herbicide. Also they have the environmental pollution because they come to the water body and other and also we are getting the herbicide resistance weed. So, these are some type of limitation. So, if we see how we can use, use the weed, how can you control the weeds in our organic agriculture, when we cannot apply it any herbicide. Under organic weed system management, the central goal is to reduce weed competition and to reproduction to a level that the farmer can accept. I have already told it is no, you cannot eradicate the weed. Weed eradication, matlab, whatever the weed you have to throw out of the field, you cannot, there should not be any weed seed in the soil, it is not, it is not possible. A, there is a proverb called one year weeding is seven year, one year crop weed come, so weed seed will maintain in your soil for seven years. But one single plants of weed can produce lakhs and lakhs of seed and all the seed will not germinate in the first year. Suppose a weed crop has matured, the seed seeds fallen in the soil. It is not necessary if there is 100 seed, 100 seed will come in the first year. Some weed come in the first year, maybe some weed come in the second year, some third, four, six, seven like that. So, if the weed, weed has produced their seed, 
you have to minimum continuously for 7 or 10 years you have to done the weeding. So, this is the difficult of the weed management practices. So, if you see what are the different types of methods of weed management in case of organic farming. So, we cannot use chemicals, whatever the other one is cultural weed management, second is the mechanical with the help of different types of labors with implements, farm implements and machineries and the biological weed management, how we can control the weeds with the help of biological organisms. So, this is the some cultural practices you see, first is crop rotation, after that is cover crop, then intercropping, scouting, mulching, stall seed bed, soil solarization, planting strategies, crop density and this is a different type of picture. Why here come is the sanitization and compost? In organic farming you have to always take care of your field, when you have not apply any herbicide you have to try to clean your field. We cannot allow any weed crops to grow and mature so that their seeds will be dispersed. Similarly composting because in organic farming we cannot use any fertilizer, urea or potash. In case of fertilizer weeds are not coming, but the compost or our FOIM is very high source of weed seeds. If you see in our backyards when we are growing different type of we are staying, the, our cattle is there, our pig is there, goat is there along with the rice residue whatever the jungle, weed, biomass everything we put in the compost pit. So, these are a major source of weed in organic farming, that is why we cannot use any undecomposed compost, that is why we are always promoting your compost should be decomposed, so that whatever the weed seed is there that should be dyed, that should be decomposed and that is why also we are promoting vermicomposting. In case of vermicomposting most of the weed seeds become decomposed, so when you are applying this vermicompost in our crop seeds the weed seed cannot germinate. Now is the crop rotation what be crop rotation? I have already told crop rotation is a very integral part of organic farming. Whenever we are growing same crop over the year, 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 the weed incentive will be more. But this year I am growing rice, after that way I am growing some legumes, next year in case of rice probably I can grow some other crops, similarly in case of maize this year I can grow maize, next year I am not growing maize I can grow for cowpea or soybean or groundnut. So, whatever the weed seeds, whatever the problematic weed for the weed next time they will not get that agroclimate. So, after 2 or 3 years that weed may be diet. So, in that condition crop rotation is always produced reduce the weed density. Monoculture is that is the growing of same crop in the same field year after year results in a build up of weed species and when diverse crops are used in a rotation, weed germination and growth cycles are disrupted by variation in cultural practices. So, why rotate crops? Number one, I have already told increase of crop rotation when are incorporating other things like legumes in cereal, it enhances the soil fertility due to the biological nitrogen fixation. So, your yield will be enhanced, you will get better quality food. So, there are also some indirectly benefit also reducing the weed. So, if you see, so crop rotation has a very high role and if you see in our old system, farmers are using different type of crops and they also used to rotate their crop. So, due to the last few hours our mono agriculture monoculture or intensive in huge agriculture we are going for monocropping. So, there is a need to shift paradigm shift from our monoculture system to the crop rotation. If you see this is a small experiment has been done what is the effect of different type of tillage and crop rotation on the weed and different crops and if we see this is the tillage, tillage also affect the weed because whenever we are tilling the field different times different type of weeds is coming in our field with the tractors, with their tires and other things. And similarly, whatever the weeds is present in the deeper cell soil layer, they come to the surface. So, always there is a problem, but in case of no tillage you see this is no tillage. When we are not tilling is restricted, if you see weed count whatever the is there and what is the strategic tillage and reduced tillage. So, if you see and there is some crop rotation. So, if you see in case of whenever we are going weed and weed only same crop, so weed count will be definitely will be more, but in case of why inhibit the weed sorghum fellow and there is some crop rotation, so there is a chance of less crop weed infestation. Then types of mulching, what is mulching? When we are covering the soil surface with some inputs, we are covering the soil surface, we are going crops, so in between area is vacant, one crop will be here second crop here and this is vacant place. So, always weed will come here because there will be no competition from plants 
and after the weed maturity seeds will be here, so next year weeding will be more. So, but if we can cover this in between space of the mulching with some materials, your weed cannot germinate or there will be suppress. So, these what are the different types of mulching is there? It is not necessary, it will be some living mulches like straw mulch, rice straws you can use, stubble mulch is there, alpha alpha we are cropping in between maize, some crop alpha alpha there is also a living mulch. So, this is the living plant, you can also use some other mulch that is the plastic materials. You go how beautifully strawberry is going because strawberry is a very high value crop more than 100, 200 rupees per kilo. And if we cover the soil with the plastic and which makes some small mole pore where we put the strawberry plant. So, no weed can germinate. So, these also reducing the weed population and also they are reducing the soil evaporative loss. So, that with less water we can grow these crops because soil loss will be minimized. So, there are different types of mulching and we have to use different type of mulching in organic farm. So, one experiment has been conducted on the effect of different types of mulching on yield of chili. Then if we see in some experiment there is no mulch, another experiment we have used organic mulch maybe some crop residue 12 ton per hectare and what is polythene mulch in my earlier slide I have already told how to put. So, if you use the number of the weeds in 2013, 14, 14, 15 and 15, 16 I have just want to know the mean data. For the no mulch the weed population is very high. It is mean more than 179 weeds in present for particular 1 meter square area. But in case of organic mulch if you see when 12 ton per hectare very less weed is available. Similarly, already 17 mulch. So, if you see this whenever we using different type of mulch it reducing the weeds. When there will be reduction in weed your yield will be more and definitely your cost of production will be less. So, our benefit cost ratio will be high and you see highest benefit cost ratio we are getting due to the organic mulch. But why not for black polythene mulch? Because black polythene may be costly, we have to purchase the parquet. But if we use organic minerals and organic mulch like crop residue, jungle weed residue or maybe like wheat, rice, straw other things. So, it will en reducing the weed problem also enhancing the benefit cost ratio because we have not to purchase. And organic farming always we try to promote that. And after certain time while they will decompose in the soil, they will also conserve the soil moisture and they will enhance the soil fertility and soil aggregation stability. So, this is another experiment has been done on the cucumber and if you see their yield values where whenever there is no bare soil, there is no mulching, we the only 5.57 ton per hectare. But whenever using different type of mulching maybe black or yellow or transparent you see we are getting more than 100 percent yield enhancement. So, this type of mulching is always promoted different type of crops and this polythene mulch we are promoting different type of vegetable crops, high value vegetable crops may be cucumber and also for the high value fruits like strawberry. So, whenever with the maximum weed reduction 98 percent weed has been reduction has been done under black plume. And if you see because this black plume greatly inhibited the line penetration to the soil, they are not allowing entry of the soil in the soil. So, weed seed not germinate and whatever the weed seeds may be germinate that will be suppressed dive due to the polythene. So, their total population and total their growth will be hampered. So, ultimately our crop yield will be enhanced. Now, it is the cover crop. Every time we cannot use dead materials of plants rice straw may be maize straw or be plastic in our field. But we can use some type of crops that is a living crops in the field which will cover the soil very fast. So, what happened in the very high hilly areas when there is too much rainfall in the high slope, if there is too much rain in a particular day due to the surface runoff and high speed velocity lots of soil is being lost. Along the soil lots of nutrient is being also the lost. But uh, if we promote different type of cover crops like cowpin, rice bean, maybe our different type of also spreading type of groundnut and some other crops, they can cover the soil very easily and they will restrict the entry or direct impact of the rainfall direct to the soil. So, our soil loss will be lost. Similarly, they will also conserve the moisture and there are different type of like rice bean, groundnut, rye, red clover and buckwheat. They also give protection against soil erosion, improvement of soil structure, soil fertility enhancement and wind suppression. But cover crops that develop rapidly and dense canopy, they can keep sunlight from newly emerged weeds and outcompete them and they are also providing some organic mulch to the crops. So, this is the benefits, there is nutrient cycling, organic matter, reduce soil erosion and in case of also can they also improve the wildlife habitat. 
because whenever we are putting some cover crops, there are lot of microorganisms, maybe arthoam and other, they are living within that part. So, they are also have some positive role and they are also enhancing the soil biological quality. Second is the soil solarization. What is this term? Solarization. In major part of India, if you see in the mainland, in the summer season, our soil temperature is good 40 degree, 45 degree like that. But that itself is not enough to kill the weed seeds. But even we can increase this temperature further to 8 to 10 degree by more than 50 or 55 degree, majority of the weed seeds become tired. So, how to do that? So, there is a process of called soil solarization. Previously, just like we have been using the black polythene mark, here the system is different. Here we are using the polythene, but that polythene should be transparent. So, we have to cover our soil surface with this transparent polythene mask, so that the inward solar radiation can come. If our soil surface and it is the sun, if you see and the covered with the plastic body, so all the solar radiation can come here, they can come. But due to this plastic barrier, they cannot go back. So, they whatever the solar radiation is emitting, they are again coming back to the soil. They cannot go to the atmosphere. So, in that condition, our soil temperature is being enhanced. If the temperature is being enhanced by 8 to 10 degree, then lots of insect spores, maybe insects, some whatever the present in the soil, some disease spore along with weed seed has died. So, that will help in our reducing the weed seeds and also the weed germination and competitiveness. So, what is the role? First, co first cover the soil plus with plastic, maintain for 6 weeks. Generally, if you cover for 1 days or 2 days or 5 days, you will not get result. So, if you see the temperature is good up to 50 degree centigrade, up to 122 degree Fahrenheit and they kills the weed and other soil pest. And if you see whenever the different type of, this is the control, the weed biomass is very high, but after 4 weeks they are reducing. So, everywhere there is a reduction if you see and after 8 weeks the weed biomass is reducing drastically. And so, weed production is reduction and whoever goes to the other side the yield, in case of control whatever the we are getting, whenever we do 8 weeks solar solution, yield will be enhanced. So, weed population is decreasing and yield will be enhanced. So, this is the simple philosophy of soil solarization. So, there are a different type of soil solarization experiment has been done all over the world. And if we see the emergence of two some areas like trianthema in the surface soil as well as the tenth soil, in 0 days in the between the weed population is very high. Whatever we are going more soil solarization, we are covered the soil with transparent plastic seed, not the black plastic seed. If you see the weed population has been decreasing. And this is same for the other weeds, not for the only particular weeds. In everywhere their weed seed population and emergence is decreasing. Second crop is the intercropping. What is intercropping? When we are growing two or more crops side by side in a particular area of land, with some definite row management. There is simple difference between mixed cropping and intercropping. In mixed cropping, we are simply mix the different type of seeds and broadcast in the field. So, there is no definitely row management, but in case of intercropping, we are maintaining plant population in nicely way and growing in lines. So, it is they are no, suppose we are growing only maize, you will know maize spacing is very high about 50 to 60 centimeter. So, whatever the two lines of maize, the inside is very much vacant. Similarly, it can also for the sugarcane. So, there is too much space or land is available in between sugarcane. So, these allow to germinate of different type of weeds. But if we can grow some type of crops, maybe leguminous crops within the sugarcane or within the maize, what will help? It will help to reduce the weed population. They will not allow to compete the weed. And they also may be nitrogen fixation in the soil. And after their decomposition, they are also giving organic carbon to the soil. So, the soil quality is enhanced. That is why intercropping is always promoted in organic farming. There are different types of intercropping. One is the additive series and second is the replacement series. If you see in additive series, suppose we are growing 10, 10 lines of maize. So, in this case of additive series, we will not reduce the 10 population. So, our main crop, suppose if our main crop is maize, so, this population will be 100 percent. We will not reduce the population of maize. And we will make our lines in such a way, crop geometry will change. We can grow suppose second crop legume and we can grow for 25 percent area. So, our main crop will not reduce. But in case of replacement series, we will grow different type crops in such a way, so that we will not grow any additional crop. Out of the 100 percent, 
75 percent lines probably I can given for maize and 25 percent I can go for soybean. So, by this way we are reducing the some population of the major crop maybe maize and other things and in this line we are going some extra crop. You see this is the different type of example how intercropping is growing. This is the maize with other crops, we are growing maize with mustard and also we are going maize with pea crop and also maize with potato and other things. But we always promote this type of crop where there is legume in, in nature. Because whenever in organic farming, we cannot use inorganic fertilizer from the outside. So, soil fertility should be always in your mind. And for the soil fertility enhancement, there is a need for biological nitrogen fixation which can only be done by the legumes. So, if there is lots of intercropping we try to promote in organic farming, it is better to promote some crops may be leguminous crops like soybean, groundnut, pea and others in organic farming. This is the weed suppressing effect of maize legume intercropping if we see these three we are using only sole crop. There is no intercropping and these two we are cropping maize plus bean and maize plus cowpea intercropping. And if you see what is the weed density in all the stage if you see whenever we are using intercropping with two crop our weed density is less. Similarly, if you case the weed dry matter we are getting the same result in all the stages from 80 to 140 days wherever we using this intercropping maize plus bean and maize plus cowpea. So, our weed biomass is also less. So, when weed biomass is also less they will less compete with the crop for different type of nutrient water and space and our crop will be more. So, this is there, there is different type of crop rotation and there is advantage of intercropping. While the crop rotation increase crop yield better control of yield and also the intercropping is the suppression of the yield. And also this crop rotation maintain the fertility of the soil, the intercropping is also enhancing the soil fertility if you are using some legume in nature. And they both are also know to the re reduce the pest and disease control. Another technique for organic farming and organically weed management cultivation is the stall seed bed. So, whenever we field we have seen in our experiments, suppose the field is just like bucket, whenever there is some rain we use to plow the seed. So, we make the plowing, we made a field ready and we give some irrigation otherwise there is some rainfall. Immediately within 3 to 4 days we are seeing lots of weed is coming, thousand and thousand of weeds and this weeds is very tough to control. So, what we can do? We make plowing the field, why the population is very high immediately after plowing the field? Because while in case of plowing, aeration is there, some weed seed may be present inside the soil layer, so they come also in the surface, so that they can easily germinate. So, if we make, we go for crop preparation, plant preparation, field preparation we have done, we have plowed the field, level yield and we may give some irrigation if there is no rainfall, so we will see and we will wait for 7 to 10 days. In this condition we can say within this 7 to 10 days more than 60 or 50 percent of the weed will germinate and there will be very luxurious weed growth and after 7 or 10 days if we can kill the weed by some weed management practices, some mechanical weeder and other thing otherwise we can again one plow, the majority will the weed population will be less. As most of the weed seeds become germinate, if we grow the crop after 10 days for another plowing, so at that condition the weed population will be less to compete of the crop. This is called stale seed bed technique. We are waiting for some particular period to let the germinate the weed and then kill them. So, seeds are transplanted, then can be planted into moist weed free soil. This technique helps to provide an opportunity for crop emergence and growth before the next plus. If you see, this is the diagram of the seed subtraining. This is the stall seed bed preparation we have done. If you see, this is the different type of our crop seeds and this is the weed seeds. The majority weed seeds is present in the lower layer. But whenever we have done some seed bed preparation or plowing, this weed seed is coming to the surface layer. So, immediately after that some rainfall, these weeds become germinate. So, when the majority of weed seeds germinate and we kill them and we grow subsequently our crop, so our weed population will be less, our crop will be high. There is another control is the mechanical weed control. When we cannot apply any herbicides. So, we have to take care of holistic approach and we have to take care of all the weed management apps and one is the mechanical. Mechanical simple mean it is with the help of some machines, maybe some human and along with some implements. So, it is both time consuming, labor intensive, but it is very much needed in case of organic farming. The choice of implementation, timing and frequency will depend. 
implement different type of implements there such as fixed arrow are most suitable for level crops, there is brass weeder, how are heroes, trines and brass weeder, there are different types of mechanical weed control is there. And if you go to the some developed countries in other side, they are using very huge, huge machine for this mechanical weed control. But in organic farming, when we cannot use any type of herbicides, we have to always promote this type of small, small in instruments. Because every time hand weeding is not possible. If nowadays, if farmers has less labor, he have to hire labor from the outside and labor 300, 400, 5 rupees per day. And if you need too much of labor, so that cost of cultivation will be too high. But and there is also lots of time consuming process, sometime you will not probably get labor. Labor may be engaged in some other narega or other activities. So, if you some small scale development, some farm implements which you can run in between your crops with harrowing the plant and weeding, that will be very much importance need in case of organic. So, this you show different types of how the mechanical weeder. One example is very important, this is the cono weeder. In case of rice, we are using this cono weeder for controlling the weeds. But one thing you have to assure, your all the rice should be planted in lines. If you do not plant the rice in lines, you cannot run the cono weeder. The case is very easy. If you do for the hand weeding, if you see, maybe 5 or 6 labor is needed for a particular field. But one person can do the same area of weeding with a very small cono weeder. And it is very cheap in the market, only 1000 or 2000 rupees. So, a farmer can afford this and doing two type of cono weeder by cross sowing, by cross running, we can maximum 80 to 90 percent weed can be controlled. And if you see this is the different type of some mechanized or advanced like brass weeder, lily and this is flame. This is used some developing countries, they are increasing very high temperature and they kill whatever the weed in the field. So, what is the performance of the technology if we see, we have done different type of experiment, one experiment by Jado Battle 2013 and they have reported that in case of suppose farmers hand weeding. We have tell already two hand weeding has been done, that is the common practice of every farmer, the weed population decreases 50 percent. However, in case of Japanese paddy weeder and Kono paddy weeder, the weed population is more. It means, whenever using this type of mechanical weeding, maybe Kono weeder or Japanese Kono weeder, more weed is being suppressed. So, always we should advocate for better weed control and also the reduction of the cost. And also see, the grain is also enhanced and also the ratio. So, this type of mechanical weeding has a very tremendous role in case of organic farming. Although most of the male our small and marginal, small and marginal nature may be some hilly areas and remote places, there is a need of development. So, small, small implements will be very easy to carry, very less costly and highly effective. Now, is coming the biological weed control. There are a law, whenever we are telling the biological weed control, it is mean we have to use some living organisms for controlling of the weeds. Just I example telling in Parthenium, Parthenium is not a problem in Mexico or other areas. Because in their natural ecosystem, there is one insect is called that is Gygrogamma bicolorata. So, they attack the Parthenium plant and they can control their population. But in case of India, when it has came, there is no natural population. So, there may be some science behind it, how to use these different type of natural insect and enemies in our organic weed control management practices. So, use of living organisms like insects, disease organisms, herbivorous frills, snails or even competitive plants for the control of weed is called biological control. And in biological control method, it is not possible to eradicate weed, but population can be reduced. That is I already tell. In case of our organic farming, why we cannot any high herbicide very effective may be, we cannot use that. But our main aim is not to control the 100 percent of the weed. We have to reduce the weed density in such a way, so that it is not doing any economic damage to the crop. There may be some weed here and there, but it is not necessary to control every weed. We try to control the weed before there is flowering stage. And we have tried to manage the weed in such a way, so that they will not do any economic damage to the crop. So, qualities of the biogen, but whenever using any biological things, any biological may be insect, may be pathogen, we have to very much care. Otherwise, if we have taken some insect for control of a particular weed, but if that insect is known to evade the other crop species and they can start the eating for the other crops and that will be very much problem, then we cannot control and it will be a huge problem for any country. So, there is a lots of rules and standard protocol is there before using any type of this type of bioagents. 
द बायो एजेंट मास्ट फीड और इफेक्ट ओनली वन होस्ट एंड नॉट द यूज फुल प्लेट इट्स मीन If some insect I have taken from the outside to control a particular weed or plant, even it will die, but it will not eat the other plants. That host specificity should be there. Otherwise, if we will come to invade our crop plants, then our whole agriculture will be in problem. Similarly, it should be free of predators and parasite, and is mostly capable out of the host. Their population should be increased high. Suppose one insect is there. and if their population is not increasing in a very high role and weed is too much everywhere there is weed it cannot control so it have to also have to be fast growing you have to adapt to the condition there may be some drought area there may be too much rainfall so you have to be hardy in nature and very much you have to be host specific and yeast must be able to kill the weed and prevent its reproduction and it also possess the reproductive capacity sufficient to increase of host species without too much delay so that's why telling it have to be compete with the weed suppose weed is coming in a very fast they are germinating again they have life completing the life cycle our insect has to also do very fast there are some biocontrol agents is there is a lots of research has been done and some biocontrol agents has been discovered over the years i just want to name some of these biocontrol agents and hope for which crop weed species they are using one is the very important use i have told that is the parthenium histophorus and there is a biogen that is called mexican beetle zygrogamma bicolorata they are used to eat the plant similarly for lantana camera teleonema scrupulosa is there for opansia delaney dactylopia stomentosus and dactylopia indicus is there for ichornia crassipes that is water hyacinth i have already told in eastern india west bengal and assam and many parts lots of our water bodies has been invaded by this ichornia crassipes that is kochuripana and this is very tough to control our fish production has been drastically reduced for this and there are some species insect some biocontrol agents which can attack these plants and can reduce their population like neuchatenia ichorni neuchatenia bruci also salvinia molesta is a problem of water weed and chrysobega semiagoris and semia multiplis used to control that similarly for alternan thera phylax zeroids agacid is hygrophily that is called free betel and amanothrip sandy sunny is used so this is a different type of biocontrol which are being used in our organic farming and there are lots of lot of new research is also doing in this how we can control the weed for by biological system and from this there is some commercial bio herbicide i have already told in case of organic farming we cannot use any herbicide that is any type of chemically produced herbicides but we can use some biological organisms this biological organisms when may be available in some bottle some spray solution we is called that is bio herbicide so for the pathogen phytophthora palmivora the trade name is divine and this divine is help to control one weed that is moreria odorata similarly for controlling of the sorghum helipens this is very important crop this is also called the jangusan grass bipolar seed has been produced and is control also the pathogen bipolar is sorghicula though they infect the weed they make some disease in the weeds so they also reduce the weed population and weed damage similarly there is also luba 11 abg 5003 and coligo the coligo has containing the colletotrichum glucosporidus by acinomin and they have also controlled the acinomin virginica that is northern joint bait in rice and soybean this is the different type of picture how different type of insect or maybe pathogens we are using in case of this is called the by zygrogamma bicolorata i have already told this is used to feed the plant of parthenium everywhere you go the road side and no man's land maybe in railway track lots of weed is there and there is experiment has been done they are feeding the parthenium weed similarly flea beating they are feeding the alligator weed and so opansia weed we can dactylopia stomentosa so we can control caterpillar of the moth that is cactoplastis cactorum they bore into the pads of prickly pear and they can also reduce their damage similarly there are other time colletotrichum so always we have to make some new science new research how better we can use this biological organisms to control in our weed in organic farming but always we have to very much take care of this of experiment there should be very much host specificity should be there this is the neochitina in water hyacinth in some water bodies there's experiment has been done in some area and we have seen what is the different type of how can we control so there is a neochitina species they study done they have first release in the field neochitina bruci 250 number were introduced by early two times in a year and they used to this is the plants and they used to invade the this central site of this ichornia crassipes and during this two years period 
stunted growth and reduced population of Echernia cassifer as a study. So, it means they are somewhat controlling and it has been also showed they are not invading the other species. So, in this our experimental basis, we can do more type of experiment for this biological agent, how to control water hyacinth, how to control parthenium. Now is the crop allelopathy. Every crop, there are some crops which they produce some hormones, maybe some chemicals in their root. So, they are not allowing to grow the other crops in their vicinity. If you go some in maybe in eucalyptus field, you will not get so much of grasses because they have some allelopathic effect. So, how we can harness this allelopathic potential of sub crop plants to reduce the weed population? So, generally all biochemical interaction is called allelopathy either may be stimulatory or inhibitory, but in our organic farming for weed control, we have more emphasis given on the inhibitory type of allelopathy. So, there is two type. First, in true type allelopathy is mean plants directly producing some chemicals which is harmful for the other plants. In case of functional type, they are not directly releasing the chemical, they release some time of plant release some chemical in the soil and which we gone through some biochemical process with the help of microbiota and they are producing some different chemicals which may be inhibitory for the growth of other plants. So, you see this is the liberation of any new chemicals how they are coming, the, le the leaf is written here, the root is there and exudation is there and this they make some chemicals and whenever this chemicals is present in this area, they will not allow to germinate some other crops. So, this mechanism we can use for whatever the crop species is there for control of weed. Some one is the rye, uh, important most allelopathic chemical one is devoa and second is boa. They are most important any chemicals are for, although is suppress weed, so always we can use it as a cover crop. So, if we grow rye in our cropping system is a cover crop, they will not allow to growth of the different type of weeds. So, this is a very important thing. Similarly, sorghum, although we know sorghum is our very important crop and there are lots of weed invades the crop, but they have some allelopathic chemicals and one of the important allochemicals are sorgolin, the phenolics and dhurin and most of the important is the sorgolin. So, if we can grow sorghum in certain area where there is some particular species of weed is occurring, this sorgolin chemical may help in reducing the germination and growth of establishment of that weed. So, it can be manipulated and used. Similarly, there are some other crops like sunflower. Sunflower is also phytotoxic to following crop in crop rotation. So, there may be whenever we grow in sunflower in some cropping system, when some perine, some problematic weed is there, we can promote the growth of sunflower. So, that but always we have to take care whenever we growing some allelopathic crop potential that should not have allelopathic effect to the next crop. Otherwise, our next crop yield germination and everything will be disturbed. Similarly, the brassicaceae family has a strong allelopathic chemicals and glucosinolate. So, how best we can harness these chemicals, this is one of our major concern. So, this is the different strategy, how we can do for organic carmine, we can go for polythene mulch, we can go for eco-friendly expensive macros and how we can harness the different type of allelo chemicals by growing in cover crop as it is the crop rotation and the cropping system and also how you can use in the experiment the sun have also used for the intercrops and gross return maximum in the polythene mulch. So, the, when are we using different type of holistic management, we can control the weed so that our economic damage would not be very high and we can go for sustainable organic farming. So, allelopathic effect control there is very much cultivars also there, intercropping with allelopathic weed suppression plants should be done and there is allelopathic crop cover crops, allelopathic plant residues and inclusive of allelopathic crops in rotation. So, we have to harness different type of things. Similarly, whatever the different type of cover crop and one crop and wheat suppress. If we grow cover crop wheat, main crop cotton, they are known to suppress the wheat elution indica, amaranthus palmary. Similarly, in case of white mustard and main crop olive, they are reduce the control of the amaranthus. So, when we are going this type of crops in our intercropping system or as a covering system, they are reducing the wheat suppression and there are different type crops like hairy boch also maize, they are growing. After that indigenous technological knowledge is very important. Our farmers also have some knowledge we have going over the years. So, these farmers also very much, they are very much interested. They have different type of indigenous technologies method, how to do like leaves of pine, they have some allelopathic effect they are using in the field so that weed will be less. Similarly, how to harness this indigenous technique and knowledge, IT can knowledge, that we can use this knowledge and we can blend it with our modern science so that we can go for effective weed management. There is some example I can giving you, 
that 1 kg of salt and soap in 100 liter water in some area of Odisha they are using for the weed control. Similarly, before sowing farmers sieve see rice seed, why they are sieving? Because they float the seed, they mix also in the, they are using in the water soaking. So, whatever the weed seeds or just like weedy rice, they can germinate, they can float in the soil. So, they can separate the our quality rice because seed is very much important also source of contamination of course of weed. Similarly, we, we can use different type of these weeds for our nutrient condition and they are contained nitrogen contained 1.992 percent, 2.20 percent and other. So, these type of weed also have some compost value, some nutritional value we can use our field and we have to take care you will see. This is everywhere is in northeast is available Eupeterium and Lantanacamar is available throughout the India, but they also contain more than 3 percent nitrogen in their leaves. So, if you are using these things, but you cannot use directly in the field there will be weed problem. So, you have to compost there, while there will oil decompose, there is no weed seed remain in the field, then only we should advocate to use in the organic farming. So, by this different type of holistic management practices, by cultural practices, by biological practices, by mechanical practices, we can use, we can control the weed very efficiently in organic farming, so that that does not go to the economic yield level. Thank you.